Last week, I got to drive down to Liverpool and interview one of the most important underground bands of the 90s, The Real People, and a fella by the name of Digsy. The Real People played a massive part in launching the career of Oasis in their earliest days, and they had multiple songs kind of half stolen from them by Noel Gallagher. There's a lot of history that goes a long way back. After helping Oasis get launched, and after having spent a lot of their own time and money in the process, for some reason the real people were then completely cut off from the band. And in the end, after years passed and Noel continued to steal songs from them, they ended up taking him to court, resulting in an out-of-court settlement. That story is covered in depth in my video, The Dark Side of Noel Gallagher. In our interview, we do briefly touch on some of these things, but if you want the full story, go check out that video. The purpose of this interview was more to talk about memories of those times and to nail down some of the historical facts and some of the lost songs that emerged from those sessions. And, of course, to meet the man behind track nine on Definitely Maybe, the one and only Digsy. So, ladies and gentlemen, today it is my privilege to interview Liverpool legends, the real people. <coughs> I'll edit that cough out. <laughs> and, and Digsy getting his yeah. cans out. I'm fucking here, you getting them cans out there, oh, lads. <laughs> Tony and Chris, hello, how are you? Hi, hello. You know, nice. Sound. Hi, like James. So, can you remember the circumstances under which you guys first met Oasis? Can you tell us that story? Yep, yeah, um, well we met Noel through the Inspiral Carpets, we were touring with the Inspiral Carpets, I think it was 92. Noel was the Rosie, and along with Mark Coyle, me, Noel, and Mark, and Tony, really started getting on well. A lot of people don't believe this, like, but the way we really started talking, me and Noel, was I was a really fussy eater, I was only a kid, you know what I mean? I wouldn't eat the catering, which like, you're on tour, catering's great food, you know what I mean? And I used to take my own pot noodles and stuff like that. <laughs> so I'm sitting there one day and Noel likes pot noodles as well. So he was sitting, he goes, have you got any pot noodles? I said, yeah, I've got a stash of pot noodles there. So it was from the love of pot noodle, chicken and mushroom, that we, um, we got talking. Noel was saying that his little brother was, uh, was a massive fan of our bands, uh, which, which was Liam. Noel had showed us a picture of them in the Manchester Evening News. Liam coming to the dressing room, the pair of us just went, he's a star. Then we went to the gig in Manchester Boardwalk, which we, we'd asked a few of our friends if they'd uh, come and see them, like a guy called John Bryce used to work for Sony with us. We we heckled them like anything. We were calling them, sh shouting Sir Waddy Waddy because Liam had sunglasses on. No one in Liverpool wears sunglasses on stage, you know what I mean? They were like really rough around the edges, you know. Okay, this is Air 15 Porter Street. This was the tour that we used to go in. That's where we used to load all the equipment in. And then this little bit here was the control room. That was it. That was the way the studio was. We used to own upstairs as well. Uh, upstairs we had like a little office, a little little weights and punch bags and stuff like that. A little, a little bit of our frustration out sometimes. And uh, that's where we used to chill and have a laugh. We took them in the studio for about three months. It was only like an eight track studio and the, the, the band that came out was, was, was completely different. Well, tell us about that first demo you guys recorded with them. Yeah, well, the first demo was, um, they come down mainly at weekends, mainly all in either Bowenhead's, Bowenhead's or Mark Coyle's car. I think that's why they stayed so long into the evening, so they could sober up to drive home, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, so we just started recording, we set up, uh, but our, it was all on our equipment, Actually, one, one of them recording, yeah, one, one, one of them eight tracks. We just recorded them live, really. The main things that we tried to do was more on try and cut the guitar solos down a little bit. We actually done a cover of one of our songs, a song called uh, Heaven Knows, which we can't find. It's been locked everywhere. We know it's it's 
It could be right there, James. It could be right on them reels and reels there. Uh, we've had to look for it. We can't find it anywhere. But, but there is a copy of Oasis doing a real people song. People say that uh, the Chris sings like Liam, but uh, actually it's the other way around because Liam had never ever sang it with, with headphones on before in the studio. Chris used to uh, put the headphones on. He'd sing on track one. And he'd sing it and then give Liam the headphones because he wasn't used to singing with there's headphones ex- on. There's and, examples and, of this on here on our own little video that we've made. The reason why uh, Chris ended up singing singing on Columbia, well, also because... You know, he, he I was did helping, have, help him write the song he, as well. He, he, was, he, he did have parts you know, of, of the words and stuff like that and, and the melody and stuff. You know, I, I was there at the time and witnessed all of this. And then on uh, seven is my vocal because Liam hadn't sang it yet. So these are like the... It's like the, the guys. Ad, yeah, the, the guide vocal that yeah. I've been singing. There we were, and here we are. All this confusion. On eight, we have Liam and Noel doing the choruses. Feel because the way I feel. And Tony, Liam and Noel doing ad libs at the end. Yeah. When Oasis recorded with the real people at their studio, they recorded six songs that ended up being used for the live demonstration tape. On those sessions, however, they actually recorded a total of 12 songs, some of which have never been heard by the public. Lock All of Doors turned out to be the one that he's on with the Chemical Brothers. No, Lock All of Doors is one that he's put out on his own album. That was yeah. that was a bit of a, a lift from one of our songs called My Own Dream, which goes, Lock All the Doors, Lock All the Doors, Lock All the really? Doors. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. A tune called My Own Dream was released on March 1 Lane, which was, which was recorded in 1992, but never ever released. It was only re- released at about six years ago or something, six years wasn't ago, it? Yeah. When we got all the rights back to the recordings and stuff like that, so we released it just on our small own label. But there's another one, definitely, that's, um, have a little look at that one. And the last one to mention is the first ever recording of Whatever. Yeah. On which Tony played and wrote the string part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, what's the name? It was was only on, like, you know, a little Casio keyboard, but it had a really good string sound. And I I just suggested about about putting some some strings, like the little string line on there. I'm sure it was just recorded with, like, an acoustic guitar doing a song, and then, because the kit was already mic'd up, Noel got in and just played on the kit. So I'm sure the demo that we've got is Tony on the piano, Noel on the drums, and on the acoustic guitar. And maybe all of us doing some BBs, because that's what we used to do on them demos. We sometimes used to all just get, get around the mic. Do you still have that whatever somewhere? No. Somewhere? Yeah. I'm sure we've got it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But I can't find it. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the channel, the one and only Digsy. Say hello, mate. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the mood. <laughs> so, Digsy, how did you and the Oasis boys first meet? Through the real people. Right, and you, you've been knocking around with them since childhood, haven't you? Oh, yeah, well, well, as the baby said, them too. Yeah. Yeah. Still, still <laughs> fucking do. <laughs> when all this was going on, we, you know, I was in smaller, you know what I mean? And nothing's more important than your own, your own fucking band, you know? Mm. And in hindsight, now I can go, fucking hell, man, I should have fucking you know, st- stood up for, for, the, for these. Because I remember that, Chris, we'd done the water rats, and Liam had come, just like that, and after the gig, we are in the dressing room, and I, Chris, like that goes to Liam. What's, what's going on with your fucking kid, man? Liam's just going, you're on about, mate. You're on about, mate. You know what I mean? It's like, that, that's when it dawns on me. thought, you little fuckers. They only wanted that acknowledgement. You know, they didn't want fucking money. You know, they, they name under the fucking title of a fucking That's all they wanted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah
I said, you're going on last, you're going on last, do you know what I mean? Like that, we, so we actually, although we, we should have been headlining, we, we went on first bef, bef, and let them do the last thingy, because yeah. that's what Liverpool bands do, you know what I mean? Make, make them feel welcome and all that game and stuff. Any change? <laughs> This is a club called Labato. Um, it used to be a, 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 an independent music venue, but it's, it's, a, it's a gentleman's club now. That's why I'm here. Um, and we played there with Oasis. I heard them sound check and I said, yeah, use headline. Do you know what I mean? Just to make me fucking feel more welcome. <laughs> Twats. The difference in sound of Oasis before they started working with you guys and after, it's absolutely massive. Yeah. Um, when you guys brought Oasis to Liverpool, it's been widely reported that you gave them advice on developing their sound, and particularly to Liam, in developing his vocal sound and style. You can hear before, he's singing quite like... Sings a bit more like Ian Brown. Yes. I'm, well, I'm willing to do the early Manchester demo that I've heard and uh, play. And then and afterwards, then... he's got his sound, that he's got. He's, he's doing it completely different after hanging with you guys. Can you tell us that story of well, how Well, I think he has got a bit of a scouse twang, and the reason why is sometimes we record them instrumentally, do you know what I mean? And then, as we said before, Liam uh, never used headphones in the studio, so... He was finding it very difficult, he putting them on and go, oh, I just can't, I can't do it, I can't do it properly. So I said, well, how about this? I'll sing it first, you need to sing along with me. Yeah, I think that's where he got some of the fra well, like, yeah, some phrasings and stuff like that. And it's well, one of the sad things for us about it was uh, when we put our next album, I was everyone said there uh, that we sound like, like I sounded like it was like, oh no, man. <laughs> but anyway, it's the other way around, folks. <laughs> so was, was there any actual specific coaching you gave to Liam, or did he just kind yeah. of learn by watching no well obviously he's he's ghosting what i'm doing do you know what i mean so then he, he's singing along with me and i suppose if you sing along with anyone or even if you're singing along in a pub with someone do you know what i mean you sing with their phrasing do you know what i mean so he was getting our phrase and eventually we take liam out leave liam in and bring me down so obviously as time passed you and oasis as the two bands sort of drifted apart and by the time of early morning glory you guys have kind of gone your separate ways. A lot of people, including myself, have kind of wondered what the story was behind that. So I want to just read you this um, from Tony McCarroll's book. Um, he mentioned how behind the scenes, all of a sudden, Noel announced to the band that no one was to put the real people on the guest list for any gigs anymore. And if they did, he would take you guys off again. And it just seems unusual for people to fall out as intensely and suddenly as that without some reason or some fight. Well, I do remember the time that, that, that we went to Eden Studios and um, they, had, they had a session drummer in at the time uh, who, who wasn't very good. I mainly no, it was been horrible to Tony McCarroll because uh, this session drummer wasn't very good, really. He asked our drummer to, to play on the track, but our drummer was playing it while he was there. The manager turns up, Marcus, to take note for some lunch. Tony, our drummer, said, said to Tony McCarroll, you play it because there's nothing wrong with your drumming. When he come back, he thought it was our drummer that had played it. So when, when Noel got back, he turned on to Tony McCarroll and went, say, yeah, I see, that's how it's done. <laughs> and Tony McCarroll went, that's me playing. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so Noel lost face and that could have been it then? Yeah, yeah. Been yeah, it. yeah but yeah, no, only time I've ever, ever had words with Noel was when we were supporting Paul Weller and it was going through the... It was going through the case of, uh, uh, what about Columbia, what about Columbia, what about Columbia? Oh, I get it sorted. And at one stage, he was in front of Paul Weller and a few other people said, what do you want, money? I went to take his wallet out. And I went, uh, I had to get taken out. I had to get escorted out by people, like, really. Oh, I, just, I just thought it was really not, no need for it, you know that's what I mean? Dirty, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's the truth. If you've got Definitely Maybe, you will have heard Diggsy's Dinner, which is named after this man. Diggsy, can you tell us the story of how that song came about? We're in the Nail People's uh, studio, and we're all off at our barn, and so everyone started having a jam. Noel's on the drums, all that gear. I, like that. I farted and I fucking stunk. Well, all that gear. <laughs> and I'm saying, guess what I have for me tea? Guess what I have for me tea? It was a jam, <laughs> <laughs> So that's where it came from. Yeah. A fart. <laughs> this is <a> song <laughs> coming from the shit itself. <laughs> it's not even a fucking song. Uh, this. And you absolutely hate the song. Never eat a food that you can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> 
So last week I talked to Damon from Ocean Colour Scene and he talked a little bit about the time when you guys, Ocean Colour Scene and Oasis all got up together to perform Day Tripper. What do you remember about that gig? They used to usually finish the show with it and when we were on tour with them, me and Tony would get up every night and, and, and sing it with them. Liam and Noel did get up together and there was that one night where I was a bit pissed off because we'd done it every single night for the tour and just because Liam and Noel had turned up, uh, they got up and done it. And we never, well, me and him were standing at our backstage going, well, you know what I mean? It's a bit of shit, isn't it? <laughs> and then, um, then the next time we done it was on the on the Royal Albert Hall, and Noel turns up, and that's the thing though that we Damon was talking about because he thought, oh, we good to get us both up because we were like um, a little bit of a court situation and stuff at the time. Mm. Get us both up and try and wind us both up, see how see how we if we took the biscuit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but we never, we just we just uh, had a good night. So you guys know Lee Mavis from the Lars. How did you guys meet? We met Lee Mavis in about 1988 when they'd just been signed to Go Discs. Yeah, well, uh, this was originally our, our studio um, that we had in about 1988. It was like a packy room, but um, this, this is where we met the Lars. And there was many a time, many a good time out. Yeah, this is Pound Hall Square in Liverpool. We just lost a little deal that we had at the time, so we had to give up the Prachy room, but we still owned the lease. We bought the lease of, of, of the room, and we'd, we'd done the room up to be like a studio. And uh, we sold them whatever was left on the five-year lease. But it was really funny because uh, that was our den. That's where we went every single day. When you're a young musician in Liverpool, yeah. that's what it used to be you're like. Just getting paid. So get, that, that, that's your job, isn't just it? Just every day you're up, you go to the studio, you hang around with your mates, everyone's smoking weed. It was fucking great. <laughs> um, yeah, and that, but that's what you do. You just you're there all day making music, playing guitars, and then and then maybe going out for a, a bevy in town. Do you know what I mean? And then back to the room. So it was great. So that was our little den, and that was our little life. And then the Lars come in and um, come running around the studio going, is this ours? Oh, where's the lights? And we, we were like, yeah, it sounds all right, lads. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll see you later. Shut the door and everything. And then we went home to my mum and dad's. <laughs> <laughs> me and him were sitting in my man and no, dad's. Where's he going? Yeah. Because we, um, we still, I think we still lived at home at the time. And we were sitting there going, what are we going to do now? And he got, I said, yeah, let's just fucking go back. <laughs> just knocked on the door like that. We had their money in our ass pocket. Like, can we come back in? <laughs> <laughs> so we were there every night for about five months. <laughs> and this is why they were, um, they were reace and like anything. They, uh, but we got, got to be really, really good friends with all of the bands, uh, any of the lads. Do you guys still see John Power ever? Yeah, we see John uh, uh, around. Do you know what I mean? We supported him, yeah. No. Oh yeah, you sports it yeah last last month. Fucking shag the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and so I understand you guys have a, a tape copy of the very first demo of the Lars as well, given personally by Lee. That is the original demo tape of the Lars. Lars bedroom demos. Mega. So I'm sat here in the kitchen of the Real People studio with this guitar, which used to belong to Lee Mavers of the Lars. It's a Takamine, Takamine, whatever you call it, EN20, made in Japan. And it's really nice. Yeah, well, this is the Lomax where um, Oasis have played uh, on the 93 tour or something like that. It must be one of the very first tours. Um, we were all here. We all had a really good night. But Noel and Liam have been to see us, been to see the real people and smaller, both at this venue. This is it. This is the old Lomax Fuser. It's now called... It's now called... It's now a gay bar. It's now a gay bar. It's now a gay bar. No, I think it's just... You can't get in because it's called out. <laughs> <laughs> Right, this is the crazy house in Liverpool. This is where um, Oasis supported the real people in about 93, uh, with another band called Rain, which is quite unusual because Oasis used to be called Rain. But this is the crazy house, we had a great gig here. It's now called 
the electric warehouse. Well, would you guys ever work with the Oasis boys again, given the chance? I'd work with Liam, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd work with Liam, and, and, and his interviews are as cool as hell. You know? Yeah, and I, I really love the stuff that Liam's doing. I'm, in fact, we know, we know some of his band, we know Mike, he plays the guitar and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm really, yeah. I really, really dig uh, yeah, if, you Liam write stuff. Some, if you want to come and write some songs with us, the offer's always there, man. Yeah. If Liam Gallagher wants to number one, that tells you fucking dream on. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, it's, uh, there's one of our songs called Dream On, which it's is uh, which is Liam and Noel. But, 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 it was Liam's favourite song. Liam's about favourite about song, there, and, uh, and, and Noel's. It'd it, 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 it be a great cover for, for, for Liam to do. Fucking so you were there for a hell of a lot of the Oasis recordings and all that kind of thing. Were you, you, were you with these guys at the um, recording Supersonic? I was, wasn't I? Yeah, yeah I think yeah. so. But isn't, that, isn't that with me? Uh, they had a tropical fish tank like that, and we were tripping off our chest. We got. Remember, we, uh, yeah, no, no, oh, we got the do we, we put it in the tub of margarine and put it in the fridge? <laughs> that, that was after after I'd taken it out, after he spews it back up. I went went back to the fucking to the to the fish tank. I said, "Where's that fish gone?" And fucking said, "Everyone's just laughing like that." And the fucking was in, in the fridge in the tub of margarine. Like, oh, like I am because it was my. My manager's fish, <laughs> do you know what I mean? He saved like, it though. Put, put the fucking fish back. <laughs> it was Ambie's, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Ambie's fish. And he loved his fucking tropical fish and all these have come in and got it in a glass and fucking drank it. Right, yeah. So what, so what, one, of the, one of the crew drank the fish, vomited it back up, and yeah. then put it in a margarine tub. No, I, 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 I then got it and then got put it in the fucking tub of margarine, put, put it in the fridge. I, I put it back into the, I put it back into the fish tank. Oh my lord. And then someone else had taken it out and put it in a tub of margarine. <laughs> <laughs> Digsy, can you share any memories of them times, stories that haven't been told before? They play Preston, and we goes down. After the gig, Noel was going to Manchester, but he was staying at a hotel. So then, uh, just me and him, fucking went to this club in Manchester, was called home or something. Fucking. That night I ended up sleeping, sleeping with Noel. So we get there, this half, half fell the other day, oh, we're looking back fucking two o'clock in the morning, whatever. He fucks off looking for the, the key, I run, runs behind the bar and goes, fuck off, fuck off, fucking, like that, that fucking four bottles of fucking bun, and I'm trying to make you enter that, and that's just a double bed. No, dude. No, me. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't stop you, did he? He's right. He's out of the fucking air as well. That, so that was the night. He, 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 I never had a guitar. So, so he gives me this Les Paul. That uh, it's only like an Epiphone fucking thing. It was the one that I was on the Supersonic video, wasn't it? And it was also the one I sold for fifteen thousand pounds about two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that five. I don't even fucking like Les Pauls anyway. But like fucking, but I had it for fucking years. Do you know what I mean? Fucking. Like, right. And then Christie's offered me fucking money for it. This is fucking. 15 years ago, but like, uh, I think my conscience got the better of me and I was going, nah, fuck it, no, I'm not selling it, I'm going to be fucking kids, you know, like, mm. but then as as time goes by, I'm a fucking skint like that, so I said to Corey, listen, I need a, a less of authenticity as a, to, to say, blah, blah, that's an old, like that, so, <laughs> I said to, look, my daughter, she goes to a special school, <laughs> But, but fucking, goes to me. He fucking doesn't like he's just <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna like uh, add sympathy fucking things into anyway, anyway, I get the fucking letter. This is the guitar that I give to Jiggy which you come definitely made in all, all that gear. And then I have to get 15 grand! <laughs> right, so you, you got the provenance off Noel by saying your daughter's in special script. <laughs> yeah, that would be black. <laughs> no goes to Johnny. Fucking that's no way it takes you to awesome. What the fuck are you on about there? Let's go to the special girl. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we so we do all the work and he gets a fucking grand. He gets a fucking grand. So, 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 so,